Hello everyone, welcome to my little blog, a place where we talk about cameras. A lot of times it's about film cameras and the gear that goes with using cameras. And today is no exception. We are going to talk about film cameras and light meters. So today we have the Minolta Spot Meter F, a very, very good light meter from the 80s absolutely superb we're going to take a closer look at this but let me tell you a little bit about it requires one AA battery which you can get anywhere in the world it has really good optical glass a viewfinder that you look through as you look through these you will see a little circle inside the viewfinder and that represents the one degree spot meter now remember this thing is an ambient flash meter it measures reflected light it does not measure incident light and what is incident light that's the light falling on the subject so if you had a light meter that was measuring incident light you would point the light meter towards the light these units here you point to the subject and measure the reflected light that's the difference okay so let's take a closer look you can buy this in two styles there's a Minolta spot meter and then there is the Minolta spot meter F the F means flash so this particular one will measure ambient light as well as flash and if I rotate this around there you can see where it clearly says spot meter F. If you're looking to buy one that will measure flash, then just look for the writing on the side of the unit. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. This is the trigger. When you want to take a light meter reading, you press this trigger. You just quickly press it, let go. Viewfinder. Very good glass, very, very good optics. To adjust this to your eyes, some people wear glasses, you might need to adjust. You just rotate this. You rotate it until you look through the viewfinder and it is clear. Very simple. Very good optical glass. When you look through these units, very, very clear, crisp and sharp. And the inside, as you look through, you can actually see the um, details of the measurement you'll see a little LCD um, numbers inside now if it's on a bit of a dark day you want to take the reading and you can't see it you actually press this button here and there's a little light that lights up inside the unit and then you will be able to see the uh, details of the measurements the measurements will also be here as well displayed very simple to use okay right here is where the battery goes let me slide this off there it is one double a battery and that double a battery lasts a long long time that's it very simple slide this back on okay that's it on Let's talk about some of the controls here. Turn this around. So what do we have? Right here is a PC connect for a flash gun. If you want to measure the flash using this meter, you will need to connect the flash gun to here with the PC connect cable. And then all you do is Point this to the area that you want to measure. You look through, you want to take a, a reading. So for instance, if you want to take a reading of somebody's white shirt, you want to use the white shirt as your um, attention to detail, if you like. Then you take a spot meter reading, you point the flash to the subject, and then you pull the trigger. Now you will need to make sure that this switch here is actually set to flash 
your switch here is um, ambient or flash. If you're going to do flash meter readings, you go this way. If you want to do regular ambient readings, it goes this way, very clear. Okay. On off switch, that's the power switch. You simply slide that over. I don't know if you can see that, but the LCD display will show you the details with a nice clear display. Turn it off, you just slide that back, very simple. On. Okay, you'll see another three buttons on here, S, A, and H. S means shadow, A means average, and M, sorry, not M, H means highlight. So, what does that mean? Well, let's say you want to take a reading, let's say you're doing a scenery shot in a forest and there's some details in there that you want to bring out. You want to bring out the shadow details. Now, you know that light meters are all calibrated to what they call 18% gray. 18% gray is an average of all variations of shade. I think 18% gray is clustered zone five. Green grass with a light meter will measure green grass as a zone five, 18% gray, even though it's green. Okay, what does 18% gray look like? Actually, right here is an 18% gray card. That is what 18% gray looks like. Now, on the back of this particular one, It'll actually give you details about the zone system of photography. So if you buy these, very often on the reverse side, you will be able to teach yourself about zone systems. Very handy. So that's what 18% gray looks like. Now, the downside of 18% gray, if you measure a white shirt, the white shirt will try and adjust it to 18% gray because a light meter wants to take an average. So in this particular case, what you would do, you would point to the white shirt, make sure the, the center spot inside the viewfinder is on the white shirt, touch the trigger, and then all you have to do on this one, if you want to highlight the white shirt, if you press H, you press H, it will recalculate and change the exposure so that the shirt will actually come out white. That's real handy. Now, if you've been doing this a long time, you can figure it out in your head, but if you've got the light meter to do the work, then why not? Now, the same is true if you want to measure dark shadows. So let's say you're in a forest area and there's some dark shadows, but you want to retain the shadow darkness with a fine bit of detail. Well, once again, 18% gray, will actually try and make that dark shadow, black shadow, almost black shadow, a lighter gray. Well, you don't want that. You want the shadow to look like shadow. So then what you do, you point to the shadow area, press the button, get your light meter reading, and then all you have to do is press the S button for shadow. It will recalculate and tell you exactly what you need to do to get that exposure to where you want it. Very handy. Now, let's say you're taking a scene where there's lots of different shades and you don't know which one to get. Or maybe you just want to get an average of between a highlight and, and shadow area. Now, because it's a spot meter, spot meter's not very good at that, it'll only take a measurement of a one degree area. So the way this fixes that, you actually take two readings. You'll take one reading in the shadow area and you'll take one reading in the highlighted area. So what you do then is you point, say to the shadow area, you press the button. And then what you do, here is a memory button. You press that. Then you take a second reading Point to the highlight area, press the button, and hit the memory button. Now you'll see 
two displays in there. Then all you have to do then is hit the average button. It'll recalculate and tell you exactly what exposure levels you will have at your camera. So very, very handy. I think that's very good. Now, after you have taken uh, meter readings, just remember to clear the memory. And right here, there's another button here called MCLR. That's actually memory clear. You just press that. Now, as you can see, you've got other settings here. ISO time, F number EV. You select that and then use these buttons to increase or decrease. Very, very simple to use. Very well made and well worth it. Now, I've seen these on eBay for $200. Absolutely well worth it. I bought this, oh, maybe 20 years ago, and I think then it was something like $600. An absolute steal and well worth the money. If you need a good spot meter, say you're gonna get into black and white and you really wanna learn about the zone system and how to meter, these things are invaluable. Get them while you can. Now, I know that on the market, you can buy these other expensive meters, but they are expensive, case in point. Here is a Shikonic meter. This also has one degree spot meter, also has two degree and wider. Now this is a more versatile light meter. It'll do um, reflected, it'll do um, incident light meter reading, and this way it'll do spot metering. Now, I'm not gonna talk about this too much, but these things will be five or six times or more the cost of one of these things. So if you're on a budget, this is the one to get. So how do we get this to work with a flash? Well, maybe what we'll do, we'll take a flash gun here and I'll show you how to hook it up. So here is a Metz flash gun, older flash gun, absolutely superb. So I wanna take a light meter reading with the flash, with this flash gun. Okay, already got the cable here attached to the flash gun. Let's attach it to the flash meter. There we go. Have to slide the switch over to flash. Need to power this on. Just give me a second. till we see the orange glow, which is the power ready light. Okay, the power ready, power ready light has just come on. So what we would do now is look to this light meter, to what you want to measure. Let's assume it is a um, white shirt as an example, take a spot meter reading. You would point the flash gun to the subject. Now remember, you are measuring reflected light. So you are taking a reflected light meter reading of whatever you're looking at. So all I do is press this button here and you may have saw that flash. Now that will have a flash meter um, indicator on the side and that's all there is to it. So all we did, PC cable connect to the flash gun, set this to flash mode, point to the subject, pull the trigger. And let me tell you, these are absolutely accurate. Absolutely accurate. So let me turn this off. Don't need this on there anymore. So that's about it for the Minolta F spot meter. So that's it on the Minolta F spot meter. Absolutely wonderful tool, professional level, very, very affordable. Not too many of them on eBay anymore. If you see one, go get one. Make sure it's in very good condition and just make sure that the battery terminals 
are not all corroded from leaking batteries that might have been inside the unit. So I give the spot meter 10 out of 10 and until next time.